There's such a big connection between the community and the land around it because that's what we were built off of. If these ranches aren't healthy, then we don't have children in our school. So if the owners of these ranches and everything can build up a healthy industry, that's what's going to contribute to the survival of this town. If we want to restore our working lands, our rural landscapes, and our rural communities, we've got to find a way to keep people on the land, to keep the land sustainably productive. You know, seven generations on this land, pretty deep roots. I want it to be here for my children and grandchildren and their children. Our, our hope for the future is that we've established a ranch that truly is sustainable. That's our goal, is the long time thinking, family ownership, leaving something better than when we found it. I inherited a ranch with four large pastures, four sources of water, and 10 miles of Ute Creek that was seriously infested with salt cedar and no water. And so we had to build from the ground up. We changed dramatically the rangeland operation here on this ranch. Historically, this ranch always had continuous grazing. A point could be made that it was certainly overgrazed. At least in our mind, we wanted to make it better. We started with four pastures, we now have 22. We established a rotational grazing system using time um, to determine when the cattle should be moved from one area to another. And that gave us the option of being able to rotate the cattle and give each pasture at least 90 days rest. Some pastures get, it from time to time, over 180 days rest and it, it has changed the quality of the forage. It's increased the grass species that we have. It's increased wildlife. It's increased bird life. And the cattle are thriving. That kind of came in the process of a steps of improvement. One, we fenced off the entire riparian area to improve that habitat. We set about on a salt cedar eradication program simultaneously. We have 10 miles of Ute Creek running through our ranch and it was severely infested with salt cedar. And those larger mature trees can easily take two to 300 gallons of water a day. I probably have more than a thousand photographs of the creek at all different times of day and stages and it's just been a, a great joy to watch this. Here in the arid southwest, uh, water is our most precious resource and we have just survived the worst drought in the history of the state of New Mexico. It was, it was so oppressive and it went on and on for almost four years. And uh, it's a lesson that I'll never forget. We were at a point where we were ready to sell our cows. We, we were at that point and it was very, um, it was debilitating to think of that happening. From that time on, I said everything we have to do, everything we do now we have to focus on conserving water. An idea I had was how to reduce evaporation off of livestock tanks. I worked with an engineer and we had some plans to create a cover. And then he found this product called Armor Balls. And it's a black poly ball that's um, the size of a softball, a third full of water. You just cover the surface of the tank with this product. And it reduces evaporation by 91% and annually saves on one 20-foot tank 
16,000 gallons of underground water. If the land is healthy, there's more habitat, there's more wildlife, there's more birds. There's a saying, if it's, if it's good for the herd, it's good for the bird. And we find that to be very true. Our bird count is, is way up from the first year we had like 17 species. Uh, and now we've got over 100. I don't view this as extra work. I view it as making our work easier. We don't want to see this ground degraded. It's our, it's our livelihood. If this ground doesn't produce, we don't produce. There's a lot of producers out there that are really managing range properly, not only from a profitable and a financial standpoint, but also as what's good for the range. Any good land steward, any good land manager, is thinking holistically. They're thinking about the health of the whole landscape, all the components of that landscape, and that includes people, wildlife, livestock. All of those parts have to be in good shape, and that's what you see with Tutta and Jack. They're managing holistically, and, and they care as much about the children in their community as they do about the land, as they do about the livestock. We do not own the land, we borrow it from our children. And so while I'm here borrowing it from my children, I want to do all that I can to be ready to hand it over to them. It's, it's what we do when we love the land.